So if you're thinking of studying abroad, your admissions profile is really important and way more than just a GPA. There's lots of really important factors that you need to have a holistic profile and Anushka is gonna share those key things you need to have a holistic, strong profile to get admitted to a top university in a different country. Check it out. Hey friends, welcome to Chime Coaching, I'm Rob. We love helping to guide people in their cross-cultural journeys, especially for success in study abroad. And if you're an international student, Anusha's got some amazing things to share about your admissions profile, more than your GPA, things like SOP, LOR, and other things that we're gonna help you out to get admitted into a top university. Anushka, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I'm Anushka Gaipat from Mumbai, India. I have completed my bachelor's in computer engineering from Mumbai. And currently, I'm pursuing a master's degree at Stevens Institute of Technology, which is in New Jersey, USA. And in this video, I'll be discussing on what matters most in the application process for studying abroad besides GPA or the test course. Fantastic. Anushka, thanks for reaching out and wanting to share your experience and your stories uh, to help other incoming students. This is really fun. But let's first talk about why is it crucial to do really detailed research about universities and courses when planning to study abroad? So research is the very first and crucial step to begin with. It is crucial because uh, we are making a long-term decision. Let's say if I'm admitted to some university and I have chosen that university and course because I have heard from someone that this university is good and this particular course has great scope in future. But when I actually study that course, I realize that this is not what I really want to do ahead in life or this does not align with my interest. So now I'm in great dilemma because I've spent so much of money, time, efforts behind the application process and also for studying abroad for the tuition fees here. So it is really important to plan carefully for which course we need to apply for and which universities offer that courses. For this, we can ask ourselves some questions like what is the field or the domain of my interest? Then what kind of potential job roles I'm looking forward to? Once we are clear with this, then we can move ahead to see which universities offer those courses. And then we can make the list of these universities. And then we have to visit every university's website. So when we visit the website, we'll get a clear picture of what this particular course is about, what subjects are taught in that particular course. Moreover, we can get the insights about the assistantships, the financial aids that university is ready to offer to us. Again, the placements, the on-campus jobs, campus life of that particular university and much more. Furthermore, if we want some more clarification or more insights about that university, then we can reach out to people who are currently studying there via LinkedIn maybe. Um, so we can reach out to them, ask them that I'm considering to study in this university. I see that you, ha you have been pursuing the same course. So can you guide me with these process? How is the coursework there? How are the professors there? And we can get the, you know, insiders talk from that particular university. So they are the right person, we can say, to guide us and clarify our doubts. I love it. Yeah, yeah research is so important. I think a lot of international students just kind of blindly follow trends of I'm going to go study this degree because it's popular, but they don't really know what they're getting themselves into, or they might not actually be good at that or want to do that kind of job. So research, talk to people, study the websites and make a decision in a direction that's best for you that you can really succeed in and thrive in because it's a huge sacrifice of time and money and you want to make sure you're doing the right thing. That's true. All right, Anushka, now let's talk about the key factors that people need to consider when writing their SOP which is their statement of purpose. So statement of purpose, here we need to provide about us, our background, our passion, interests, our career goals, and why we are choosing that university. So if I'm interested in, let's say, information systems course, then I must emphasize uh, on the skills or on the topics that I'm interested in from that particular course, why I'm choosing that university. Is that university really offering me that course? Then what kind of subjects I'm interested in? All these factors are needed to be mentioned in the SOP. Furthermore, if anyone has backlog by any chance or uh, in their previous, let's say, undergrad degree, then we need to justify why we got the backlogs 
instead of just showing that we had certain backlogs and then so much GPA. If, uh, if we try to justify that backlogs, like let's say I had uh, less GPA in my initial semesters, but then I realized that I was not taking my studies seriously. That realization really hit me hard later. And then I made myself believe that if I have to do something ahead in my life, I have to take my studies seriously. So then I made a decision to take my studies seriously. And then later, I took the studies seriously and then went ahead, banked a good GPA. Then in this way, the professor or the evaluator will understand that Okay, so this person has something in himself or herself that he can change uh, his or her way or uh, if there are any obstacles, he can overcome that. So these are the major points that we need to consider. And it's not just talking about ourselves. At least we can put one paragraph about that university, that why we are choosing that university. I like this university because of its diversity and inclusion, because of uh, the coursework here, the professors here are uh, super helpful or anything like uh, do the research how that university is mention about them you can talk about some professors that this professor i'm interested in this research field and this professor is also interested in that particular research so we can craft the sop and then make the evaluator believe that okay this person has something in himself or herself that can be beneficial for our university as well definitely yeah the sop is a great way to stand out and let them get to know you more than just a number, but as a person and seeing that unique special value that you can offer to their university. And so SOP is really about telling about who you are, what you're excited about, and really trying to make a connection through that. But next, let's talk about LOR, which is letter of recommendation. So Nushka, why does the LOR matter a lot in the application process? And what are some tips for people to approach professors or maybe like managers from work to get a letter of recommendation? So letter of recommendation is basically given by the professors on behalf of the students. It basically gives us a deeper insight about the candidate's background, skills, their strengths and capabilities. So in order to approach professors for that LOR, we must first maintain a good relation with them. It's not just that we want LOR from them so we, we would be good to them, but it's a good thing to do to maintain a good relation with all the professors in general. So we cannot just simply go to the professors and ask for LORs. Instead, we can ask the professors that, Professor so-and-so, you had taught me some XYZ subject or project, and this has a definite definitely strengthened my knowledge and has made my foundation good in this field. I'm further planning to proceed with my studies for my higher education. So can you support me with the letter of recommendation for that purpose? Now, mm -hmm. this will definitely be a good impact. And there are chances that this professor will give some positive opinions or positive views about you in their LOR. So it's a kind of win-win situation you have a good relation with them, you ask them in a professional way, so the outcomes would be definitely good. Great. So my friends, if you're learning a lot like me, give a big like and thumbs up to say thanks to Anushka for sharing all these things. We've got some more great tips coming up as well. But first, our chai question, and our question for you guys who are watching is, what's the most difficult part of the application process for studying abroad? Go ahead and tell us in the comments, what do you guys think? What's the most hardest part, difficult part for you guys trying to apply? Is it getting the right test scores? Is it the SOP, LOR, resume, other things? So let us know. And yeah, we'd love to see a great conversation there in the comments. Let's talk about resume. Resume is another important part of the application process. And so Anushka, what should people include in their resumes, especially if a student maybe doesn't have work or industry experience? So usually the resume, it is recommended to keep the resume up to one page itself and not exceed one page so what we could do is there are certain sections which are predetermined like course of study the gpa now we cannot change that we have to keep it as it is later we might have done some projects or internships in our undergrad degree so these are the great points that we can put in our resume besides that extracurricular activities play a very important role here because we don't have much of the industry experience but we have done something here in our extracurricular activities besides 
besides our studies so this creates an a positive impact a good impact for the evaluator to see that okay this candidate has done something besides their study and is not just the one who is always inside the books and this extracurricular activities i must say they matter a lot whether it be a volunteering experience whether it be organizing an event they play a very vital role so these extracurricular activities projects internships some of the important courses that we might have taken during our undergrad degree that might help and more importantly it is very essential to customize the resume as per the university's requirements like we cannot give one single resume for all the university it is essential to look what the university is focusing on if they are focusing on certain technologies certain skills make sure that you include those skills for that when applying for that universities so if, if the university is focusing more on the managerial aspect then you show in your extracurricular activities that we had managed this event at our fest and it was a huge success and uh, the number of people that were impacted due to this event and we can customize it in a better way so that to keep it in a one page we can make it worth reading and it is to the point that's great my friends were also making another video with anushka about her student life experience there at stevens institute of technology in new jersey and she's doing her ms in information systems be sure to check that video out as well anushka this has been super helpful. Thanks for kind of highlighting these other aspects just besides the GPA and the test scores to help get admitted into a top university. Really appreciate your insights. Thank you so much. It was glad meeting you and sharing so much insights about the admission process. Definitely. And friends, be sure to be subscribed to the Chime Coaching newsletter for great tips, ideas, upcoming events, and connect with us online on social media. We want to continue to serve you there, see you succeed in your cross-cultural journeys, and hear these great success stories of getting admitted into wonderful universities. Thanks for tuning in, friends. We'll see you next time at Chime Coaching. Cheers.